everybody. Um, welcome to the operations track about maximizing API management efficiency or the power of shifting down with API ops. Little notes about me. I'm Dominic. I'm a senior platform software engineer at Six Group. Um, some for those who are not familiar with Six Group, Six Group is a Swiss financial market infrastructure provider. Um, the predominant thing might be the Swiss Stock Exchange. We run that, and also we offer a lot of um, services to like bank customers and financial institutes in Switzerland. In Switzerland. Um, I've been doing platforms like for almost two decades um, in insurance, in uh, hosting, and now in financial in the financial industry. Uh, mostly doing automation, some technical stuff, but a lot of like people and process stuff as well. <coughs> in the past years, we've seen quite some trends when it comes to software development. And if, I s if when I speak from product team, I ne normally mean development teams as well. Um, you see the trends of DevOps, like s um, having collaboration, automation, continuous improvements, and end-to-end -end responsibility are all pushed towards the product teams more and more. You see that monoliths are replaced by independent microservices, and for that reason you saw you see also the rise of APIs um, that interconnect those um, new trends. And those are like the new things um, that um, happened in the software industry and in, this in the software development life cycle. Also some additional trends on top of that one to cope with um, like the complexity or even add more complexity sometimes. Um, there's also shifting left. Shifting left means uh, moving the responsibility and tasks and processes more towards software the development life cycle. Um, for example, security, compliance, early on in the, in this, um, in the, in the soft um, when producing software and services for that reason you detect um, certain flaws or bugs early in the process which is in the long term more efficient and should be cheaper. Then you have the opsification that's um, you see like terms of DevOps, FinOps optimizing for financial um, financials when it comes to deployment. You also see MLOps, AIOps, GitOps, all those like terms are shifted always more onto like product teams. That is a good and a bad thing, um, but uh, highlight mostly the bad things here. That means that the product teams are having more cognitive load, what means they have more responsibility, even though they need to produce business values. Um, what, what this also leads to this like um, skill siloing. What I mean by this is um, in monolithic um, application, you had the expert for performance, security, and so on and so forth. And now you need a small part of your job being like the security expert or the performance expert and so on and so forth. And this also leads to uh, so-called islands of divergence, which means if you have a governance rule or some compliance things that you need to implement, you once had this expert that was familiar with all the regulations and all the other compliance, and now each team needs to understand and implement those things, which can lead to a diverging standard or even implementation. That's why we're actually here. One of the things that we see in the latest trends is pushing the workload down to platforms, like removing the burden by shifting left and shifting down onto platforms. And to quote Gartner, um, yeah. I mentioned AI and Gartner, maybe blockchain is coming up. Um, a platform is a product that serves and enables other products or services. And I really like this definition because it emphasizes not on what to do and how to do it, but it emphasizes on a platform as a product. With and, and the product is always with a focus, with a customer, um, um, has always a, a custom focused role. I want to show you one example or one approach where you can build up a platform um, or bootstrap a platform within an organization. 
and that's the concept of API Ops. API Ops is some kind of a combination of like DevOps, print, DevOps, DevOps principles and GitOps principles to streamline your API development and maintenance. What this means, it takes some parts of those um, automations from DevOps, and GitOps means like everything is stored in one central place and uh, gives you the capability to build your own platform on top of those. Normally, companies that have a wide a variety of APIs um, somehow figure out that they have a huge, huge, um, in especially in enterprises, a huge um, shadow IT when it comes to API management and for that reason they want to centralize it. And mostly that's done in, I don't know, either Confluence or SharePoint and other tools. That's totally fine, but the software development life cycle of those um, of those tools um, seldom keep up with the with the changes that actually happens to those APIs. Which one approach could be just taking your API specification, or if you at least have one, and putting that one into your Git platform of your choosing. It could be either GitLab, Bitbucket, GitHub. The the pros on that one is I um, especially emphasize on Git platform because those platforms give you already some basic capabilities. For example, basic access control, who can access the repository, who can merge or edit or change certain things. And normally you have also the, the CI and CD part of that one. That, but looking at those a little bit closely, once you have all those information in a centralized space, not only the API specification, but also some metadata, but more on that later, you can then some do some tests and validation of your um, of your of your actual configurations or data. What 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 I mean by this is like typical things like linting validation, document generation, dependency management, security scanning, and so on and so forth. We've seen a lot of like a lot of talks going into that one. The good thing is like if you have it in one central place, you can then more or less tap into different tools or push it from there with all the capabilities as you, that you already have um, in regards of like pipelines and other stuff. From there, once it's validated, the next obvious step is just to enable auto uh, the, enable autopiling. That's the CD, um, continuous deployment part of that one, which means you can go to like your API gateway of your choosing, or you can do document generations and and uh, and so on and so forth. Um, at six, um, we do multiple steps to um, to 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 actually perform those action, and I'd like to show you a little example of what we're actually doing. D mainly, it's uh, the API specs and metadata. Um, that are transformed to the control plane and that one will be pushed out to certain environments and certain um, um, locations. And we actually started with onboarding a lot of APIs um, in a Git repository, but nowadays we have a developer portal on top of that one to just um, simplify the self-service for our internal, mostly internal customers. We also implemented some business requirements. For example, since we are in a highly regulated space, um, for example, we have change management in place. Not sure if you, if 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 you have that burden, but every change to production needs to be approved by certain people. Which means an API that goes out to production can only go like um, twice a week on certain time windows to production. Which means we need to schedule. Um, production um, rollouts and for that reason. And also um, from an enterprise um, perspective, um, like new application or new um, new API endpoints will be automatically automatically registered in, in the central um, enterprise architecture board. Um, those are just nice features that we put on top of um, like our Git repository. Um, yeah. 
and you see the first step is actually to store those information and the next one is to transform those information. What it actually looks like, um, if it would go f any further. Thank you. Um, that's our development portal. Um, you see you have multiple stages, um, QA, pre-prod and prod, and then you have like um, in a workspace that's more or less like a namespace in Kubernetes or like your own dedicated team, product team has this namespace. Then you can just push out um, certain certain APIs. What you also see that we have a lot of metadata, for example, um, the GDPR, like data classification, and also like enterprise application IDs, and so on and so forth, who's responsible, and so on and so forth. Um, overall, in the whole platform, we have 800, roughly about 850 APIs onboarded. Um, that's roughly about 600 are published now. They are in a published state, which they are live. And 170 something are like in production that's internal facing but also external facing towards our customers that whole thing is distributed over 13 clusters more or less and if, if you're interested in like namespaces and, and underlying infrastructures more or less like 90 namespaces with gateways and caching and control plane data planes and so and so on and so forth when a customer comes in and wants to change something, then he's able or she is able to like having a lot of pre-selects of, of things. For example, we limit the capabilities of like authentication. We um, also um, give you just um, a few options when it comes to rate limiting, some course headers, some, 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 just a few knobs, even though like most of the API platforms nowadays are capable of like um, give you like any possibilities to like um, transform things. We just toilet it down to the m most basic um, needs uh, that we think from an enterprise or like um, from a governance perspective makes sense. When building those platforms over the course of like many years now um, and even migrating from one gateway solution to the other and that was the good thing, we stored all those information in a centralized place and then we transformed them, we could easily do the switch, which means like we could then just do the translation from one gateway to the other by just one by one and migrating all the things. Some of the learnings that, that we saw or um, um, is, for example, one single API is sometimes not enough. Um, I want to emphasize on two things. Like a lot of people think of API specification that's the holy grail, but in an organization you also need a lot of metadata. Who owns this? What, what's the retention policy? Um, what's the deprecation state, data classification, and so on and so forth. And it's, it's important that you not only focus on those things. And the other part is we have customers um, that want to produce a different API documentation out of their API specification rather than like the thing that the gateway is checked, which means like um, we we allow for two actual uploads of open, open API specification. But um, as other people mentioned, um, it's not, a, not all about REST. Um, the platform also supports WebSockets and uh, GraphQL, which means then you need only the metadata with less information. Then what we also found an interesting point, since you have this like metadata and open API specification, you need to end up or mod transform that one somehow to the dedicated um, gateway. And the first initial thing was to parse all those metadata, which were YAML or JSON. But if you use different tools, they end up with different kinds of templating or like the end result is sometimes different, which we ended up like rather templating than parsing those information. Um, also, introducing compliance very early on, it's like naming convention and, and like security convention from early on, it's, it's re really crucial. And 
we always aim for a single source of truth. In the beginning, we were, were only a few APIs, but now we have the whole catalog of the, of the whole company, which gives us the, the last thing, uh, the second last thing. We can shut down like lower stages that are only for our team during night. We, we completely shut down and shut down during like off, off working hours, which means like we just destroy the whole thing and, and in the morning everything um, was, is put up because we have all the configuration, um, not, not only the platform configuration, but also the, the control plane configuration in one place. We just spin it up and in a matter of like, 20, like 15 minutes, everything is there. Um, and for that reason, we, can, we, we test every night that we have a good recovery and backup system. And um, this helps also in the unbundling, which Bill already mentioned in his um, talk. Um, yeah. and, but there's a downside. We are tight coupling to the, to the SLRs and SLAs of our Git platform. If the underlying Git platform, which is another team inside our platform, um, offering um, unit is down. There's no possibility to 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 update changes. Then, when building a platform, it's it's important that you look at the that you actually in in Silicon Valley you have this make it or fake it um, thing, which means like you just do the bare minimal and mock everything, but, that, but that's not possible when building a platform. Um, that's also the reason why I highlighted, like, start with a Git repository. It, it's all, it's everything that you need, and then you can build from there. Um, but the actual platform needs to work rather than, like, just mocking away certain things that look like you push the button because the other teams rely on you. And some takeaways. I would say nowadays it's more important to shift down on platform rather than like pushing more to the side of like the product teams then store the API and metadata if possible in a git repository or like a central source of truth um if I know that's like a lot of restrictions in a company and a lot of like business units but over time that should be the overarching goal then if you start with that one um, think of a product thinking and a customer-centric approach. And as I mentioned, start, start small and uh, just build the thinnest viable platform. And that's it. Thank you. And we're here afterwards.